Hello, I'm Scott Woodwiss and welcome to highlights of the 2013 Thrustmaster Formula Sim Racing World Championship. Round 4 of the championship is the Monaco Grand Prix. Situated around the streets of the Principality, located in the south of France, the Monte Carlo street circuit is a never-ending sequence of hairpins and chicanes, and with the barriers adding to the claustrophobic feeling of the track, the focus will be on high downforce and mechanical grip. Monaco is always seen as the jewel in the Grand Prix calendar, and it's a race that every driver wants to win. Qualifying saw the return of Bono Huis and a return to pole position, helping secure the first all-precision front row of the season. Ivar Calamese and Jack Keithley have swapped seats for the rest of the year, putting Calamese second for precision and Keithley third for GT Omega. Fourth went to Twister's Frederick Nielsen, with Martin Godfrey putting the second GT Omega fifth, ahead of an impressive Jernay Simoncic, who qualified sixth for Ash Racing, but had the pace to take pole. Zoltan Schutte was seventh, this time driving for Brem GP, and Patrick De Witt took eighth for Crown 7 Netrex. Ghost Speed's Morgan Morand and Dian Kostadinov, driving the second Netrex car here in Monaco, elected to qualify on the hard tyres to start 9th and 10th. Outside of the top 10, Philip Pushka and Marcel van der Linden made up row 6, Rasmus Tali had another difficult qualifying session to end up 14th, and at the back of the grid, Chris de Jong would make his World Championship debut, albeit in 21st place in the second Brem GP car. At the start, the front three of Huis, Calamese and Keithley all got away cleanly and held position through the opening corner of Sandovot. Behind them, wheel spin off the line caused Pushka to swipe the side of Kostadinov's netrex, while just in front, Nilsson and Schutte squeezed Gosby, sending Schutte's Brem GP into the air and into De Witt, with Morand also taking damage as a result. The rest of the field cleanly made it around the rest of the lap, apart from Giuseppe Marconi, as contact with Christy Yonk caused a spin and forced him to stall his car. The order at the end of lap one was Huis, Calamese, Keithley, Simicic and Nilsson, with Gosby in hot pursuit of the twister machine. The pressure seemed to get to Nilsson when hitting an anti-cut heading into the swimming pool section on lap two sent him on a one-way ticket into the barriers after just a lap and a half. Back in sixth, Morgan Moran seemed content with his hard tyre selection and was holding station ahead of DeWitt and Schutte. With overtaking in Monaco nigh on impossible, the Frenchman knew that it would come down to pit strategy to decide the outcome. De Witt, however, didn't appear so calm when he lost the car through the exit of Anthony Noge corner. He lost a place to Juti and then to teammate Kostadinov after another mistake exiting Casino Square. The incidents dropped him from 6th down to 9th. Simoncic was the first of the soft tyre runners to stop on lap 12 after coming under pressure from Martin Gosby for several laps. A lap later, race leader Bono Huis did the same along with both Netrex cars. Once most of the front runners had made their first stops, Huis was able to maintain his lead ahead of the hard tyre shod Morgan Morand. Ivar Kalames ran in third, ahead of Jack Keithley in fourth, with Jernay Simicic running what was becoming a brilliant race for Ash Racing in fifth, ahead of Philip Pushka. At least it would have been brilliant had Villa La Parla not found the barriers at Massonet shortly afterwards, terminally damaging the Finn suspension and ending his Monaco weekend. As the race moved into its second phase, Morgan Moran was doing well to hold second place in front of Calamais, despite starting ninth and suffering damage on the opening lap. Tire strategy was on everyone's minds, so the big question was just how far could Moran go before he had to make his first stop. Meanwhile, a poor start had hampered Dian Kostadinov, but that didn't stop him from forcing his way past Moises Rondon for 17th into saint -Devot. Proof that overtaking isn't completely impossible in Monaco. Fortunes weren't so good for Marcel van der Linden, as he performed a carbon copy of Nilsson's earlier mistake, albeit this time beaching his car on the anti-cuts in the second part of the swimming pool section. With Calamese and Keithley stacking up behind him, Morand finally made his first stop on lap 29 for another set of hard tyres. He rejoined fifth behind Simoncic and with just enough clear air to begin his charge towards a podium finish. His teammate, Philip Pushka, had been fending off Martin Gosby for several laps and eventually came under attack into the harbour chicane on lap 31. Gosby was forced to run across the chicane, helping Pushka maintain the place. Gosby's teammate Jack Keithley would then end his race prematurely after clipping the inside barrier at the same spot two laps later. 
the Brit stalled his car and was an instant retirement. A lap later, the chicane once again provided action as the fight for ninth hotted up. Blair Disley had a shaky exit, allowing Yannick Lapshan up the inside of Zuhait's Cabo at Tabak. The pair went side by side on the exit, but Lapshan nudged the side of the Jasco PSR and embarrassingly spun himself, dropping a place to Rasmus Tarly. By the halfway point in the race, the precision duo of Huis and Calames were holding what seemed to be a comfortable 1-2 at the front. Morand was running trouble free in third place, as was Simicic in fourth for Ash Racing, and Martin Gosby was holding fifth. Zoltan Schuti was putting on a great display in sixth, ahead of Philip Pushka's go speed in seventh. Patrick DeWitt was enduring a quiet race in eighth, and Zuhait's Cabo and Yannick Lapshan were completing the top ten. Such was the nature of Monaco, the race was beginning to settle down into something of a procession, with the majority of the remaining cars spread eagled amongst each other. Lap 45 marked the start of the second round of stops, for which Simoncic once again dived in first. But shortly afterwards, GT Omega's weekend would end in misery, as Gosby's mistake into the swimming pool caused an almighty shunt. What could have been a solid top 5 finish for the Brits had turned into a double DNF for his team. Now all eyes were on the fight for the podium places. Calamays moved first on lap 48 and pitted from second, allowing Moran to sweep through, despite the Frenchman requiring to stop again himself. Race leader Huis took his turn on pit road a lap later and easily rejoined to retain his first place. With both precisions now good to run to the finish, it was all down to Moran to make the difference before his switch to the soft tyres. During this time, Calamays made the most of his fresh tyres to close the gap to the go speed ahead, and by the time the race ended its final 15 laps, the Estonian was right behind Morand, patiently waiting for the Frenchman's final stop. He made that all-important final trip to the pits on lap 66. Now all eyes were on Morand to see if he had enough pace to bring down the gap to Calamays once again. Despite carrying damage since the start, Morand made it clear he was on a charge and began to pump in qualifying-style laps in his efforts to catch Calamays. The unforgiving barriers of Monaco caught out Eros Masculi in the closing stages as he lost the car exiting the harbour chicane and crunched his Pushkara into the barriers. Philip Pushka then made a crucial pass on Zoltan Schuti by capitalising on the Hungarian's mistake on the exit of Saint Devot to move into fifth. Meanwhile, Moran's hard work appeared to have paid off as by the time both he and Calamés began the final lap, the gap was under a second. But unfortunately, even though his pace had been incredible enough to close in as much as he had, it just seemed too little, too late. His critics said he couldn't win four times in a row here, but with an inch-perfect drive throughout the entire race, Bono Hui silenced those critics to win in Monte Carlo once again. With his third win of the season coming at the toughest race of the year, Hui proved once and for all that he was the master of Monaco. Ivar Calamese once again put in an impeccable drive to complete a well-deserved 1-2 for precision, while Morgan Morand had to settle for third but could take pride in the fact that he got there despite carrying a wounded car for the entire 78 lap distance. The happiest team in Monaco, however, were undoubtedly Ash Racing, as Jernie Simicic brought home a wonderful fourth place to finally give the team their first points of the season, and well-deserved too. Philip Pushka completed the top five for Go Speed, and Zoltan Schuti impressed on his weekend with Brem GP to finish sixth. Patrick DeWitt continued his consistent run of points finishes in seventh, Rasmus Tarly completed another average performance in eighth, and both Yannick Lapshan and Jan Kostadnov quietly completed the top ten. After the race, newcomer Christa Young was disqualified from the result after a technical infringement in post-race scrutineering. So let's look at the driver standings and it is still Bono Huis who leads the way with 75 points, 20 ahead of Morgan Morand in second. Ivar Calamese continues his impressive start to the season in third while Jack Keithley drops one place to fourth and Patrick DeWitt's solid scoring keeps him in fifth. Philip Pushka and Frederick Nilsson are now tied in sixth on 28 points, Kostadnov holds eighth with 24 and Simoncic, Lapshan and Tali are now in a three-way duel for ninth all on 12 points. Precision's 1-2 here increases their lead over Go Speed in the Constructors' Championship to 61 points, and they are still the only team in treble figures. Twister are still holding on to third, but good scores from Netrex and Brem GP have helped them close the gap in fourth and fifth. In fact, Brem GP are now level with GT Omega in fifth, thanks to the latter's poor fortunes this weekend, while Pushkara are seventh on 16 points. 
Ash Racing's first points finish puts them 8th, dropping faster than speed and Biocross positive to 9th and 10th. And Jasco Spain PSR are still waiting to get off the mark. The next round is the Canadian Grand Prix at the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal. And you can watch that race live as it happens by going to simrace.tv on June the 2nd with qualifying at quarter past 4 GMT and the race going live at 5 o'clock. Until then, be sure to get signed up to the FSR Fantasy League at fantasy.formulate-simracing.net. You can also check out our forums at racedepartment.com for more league information. And as always, you can follow FSR on both Facebook and on Twitter. We hope you've enjoyed today's highlights. I'm Scott Woodris, and we'll see you next time for round five of the 2013 Thrustmaster Formula Sim Racing World Championship.